call to order the Bucksport Town Council meeting for Thursday, March 27th, 2014. Road call, please, Kathy. Mike Ormsby. Here. Glenn Finley absent. Dave Key absent. Dave Keen. Here. Frank Dunbar. Here. Peter Stewart absent. Byron Benton. Here. Okay, we do have enough uh, people here on the uh, council for a quorum, but any action would have to be a unanimous vote. Uh, people uh, out there wondering how we'd get anything passed tonight. <laughs> uh, okay, item three is consider minutes of previous meetings. Do we have any? Yeah. Yep. I move we accept the minutes for January 30th as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from January 30th. Any more from the council? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Is that the, that's it? Okay. Okay, item four, receive and review correspondence and documents. We do have a, uh, a letter or a document from uh, uh, Mr. Hendrick Gidson? Gideon. Gideon. Uh, this is in reference to uh, the Charter Commission proposal for Hancock County. We basically uh, are just uh, handing this out tonight for uh, review of the council. Uh, to see if uh, they have any comments on a uh, uh, at another uh, meeting, but I, I believe Mr. Gideon has something to say. Thank you very much, Mayor Keen. Um, as you may, well, if, if any of you who have read the first paragraph of that document, you'll know that I pride myself on my work, and when I discover an error in something I've done, I need to correct it and apologize for its occurrence. In the second page of the document which you have in front of you, in the first full paragraph, the last two and a half lines should be struck after the chief financial officer, comma, strike those two and a half lines. That was inaccuracy. I accepted it on its face value. I was embarrassed to find out that it was false, apologized to the individual, and promised I would make corrections when I appeared. Okay. And I've done that. I would be pleased to be, if you choose to discuss this, be, I, if you alert me to it, I will come. Okay. Not to, not to pitch for it, but simply to answer any questions. A, ask or answer any questions. Okay, well, yes. what we're going to do is uh, this has been presented to the council. We'll give the council an opportunity to read it over. Mm -hmm. And if there's uh, any more information we want, we'll definitely get a hold of you. Or if there's any action that is going to be taken on it, we'll get a hold of you. Great. Okay? All right. Good. Two last comments. This is the prettiest room of any room in the county for this purpose. <laughs> and the, the fastest growing city may be up in the northeast, but the largest attendance is here. <laughs> so, good. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item five, budget workshop, and we're discussing education. Mr. Boothby. Good evening, gentlemen. Sorry, I scared everybody else away. But, uh, <laughs> I know it always has to do with money, and it's not the easiest to say. <laughs> what I presented to you, and I'll leave enough with Kathy for the other council members, is uh, an overview of where we are. As you know, our budget process starts back as early as November and takes us right through into May. Um, we are at a point now where we've done our expense side of the budget and we're just now getting information and data from the state in terms of our general purpose aid and we'll be going back to the school board to have our conversations relative to expenses now with revenues. Uh, what you see and I presented to you in the front is just a number of pieces of information for, for you. The, um, I've broken this down into the cost centers uh, which is the requirement of our budget development. And I want to point out that the first FY15 is good news, bad news. The bad news is the rough first blush budget is up 4.89%. This is not unusual because this is we ask people to put in what they would like to see. Uh, then we take that back and have conversations with the school board relative to revenues and impacts on our communities. But what I want to point out, I gave you a perspective um, since the district became consolidated. Um, you take a look at FY10, and I use that for the basis for the last two columns. Um, our budget, even presented with the 
as a first draft is still below where it was in FY10 as approved. So I'm pleased to say that consolidation is proving itself in terms of efficiencies very nicely. And I'm also very pleased to share with you that we're making gains academically as well. And we're moving in the right direction. Still a lot of work left to do, but we're very pleased with it. The general purpose aid 279 came out. It shows that RSU 25 will receive uh, $3.6 million as a preliminary. Expectation for Mills would be at 8.07. Um, relative to last year, uh, the general purpose aid that we received after the legislature took action at the last minute was $3.8 million. Um, I do want to point out that we only used $3.6 million of that and we offset the assessments to the communities with an additional $225,000. You know, with the board, board really felt strongly that we built our, our budget, approved our budget with $3.6 million. Any money that came in after that needed to be recognized by the towns, not by the school district. Very pleased with their action. Um, so relative to FY14, we're about even to what we built our budget on last year. 3.6 is only a thousand dollars off okay that is not a solid number legislative action has not been taken there's going to be a lot of discussion I'm sure in the guster about what's going to happen there there's been discussion about impact of a 9.5 million dollar reduction um, how that will affect us will depend on how they roll out that reduction but we'll stay on top of that Give you a, a taste of our enrollment. We're projecting our enrollment next year to be just about 1,100 students. We've hit a trough where I think we've bottomed out. And so give or take 1,100 this year. Right now, we're at 11, um, 1082. That changes day by day. But So we've hit a nice spot there. Um, I do want to point out that um, special education has been a, a, a conversation point when I've been before the council before. Um, we're showing a decrease in our percentage of special education, which is a positive trend. It's a good thing. But I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Cost sharing this year, and I know I'm going fast, but I want you to be aware of this. They changed the EPS formula. It used to be the valuations for the communities was established from two years previous valuations. They're now averaging two years. So it's going to flatten out the profile for the communities. You won't see as quick of an up or as quick of a down. And so that's a little different shift. When you look at, as we're going into FY15, I broke down the district and the cost sharing. As far as the pupils go, Bucksport would maintain 62.8% of the pupils and evaluation 67.27%. Those are all key factors as we move forward. Excuse me, Jim. That, yes. That, that would be our percentage that we pay of whatever the school budget is. Of is what, whatever is above the EPS formula, right. yes. Yeah, EPS, right. Yep. That's our cost sharing. And every year we adjust <coughs> that depending on what the totals are. Okay. Any questions before I go charging forward? <laughs> Just threw a lot at you very quickly. I mm -hmm. apologize. I think we hear this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, one, one of the big jumps uh, seems to be in debt service. Yep. I was going to point that out next. The debt service, is that, that ties to the bond that we just approved last year for the high school facade. That ties in $215,000 of additional debt service. Okay. Now, next year, when we knew this was going to be a one-year jump, next year we're going to be retiring a debt, so we'll reduce that by $100,000. Our debt service will go down by $100,000 next year. Okay, and actually, uh, Mayor, that $215,000 of debt service represents um, about 1.56% of that 4.89%. So, yep. Yep. so that's one of the keys that, you know, we saw that as a fixed. And now we're being, the other challenging, and, and let's, this is a good time to talk about the drivers of that increase. Obviously, debt service was a big driver in that. Also, health insurance, <laughs> we're anticipating a 9.5% <coughs> increase in health insurance. Last year, we absorbed a 13% increase in health insurance. We have been working through collective bargaining um, to contain those costs as best we can while still maintaining coverage for our employees. But I appreciate the efforts of the board and the, the unions for working together for that. But still, those are large increases. Um, on top of that, you have your, the collective bargaining agreements will determine the cost for your salaries and such. And, and that'll, that'll be a driver. 
There's obviously other things in this proposed budget which would be um, items that we've identified as this is would be an enhancement to the program or this is what we'd like to do. Those will all come under scrutiny the next time we go around through this and I'm sure the board will direct me to you know, identify areas where savings could be captured. Do you, do you have a, and I, I know you, there's not a definitive answer to this. Okay. Do you have a guesstimate of when you anticipate you'll have a fairly firm number? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> That's a great question. Thank you very much for asking. <laughs> this is under your <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Um, with our timeline, we need to have a date. Um, May 13th is our drop dead date that we, the board, will have to make a decision <coughs> on where they'll be. I anticipate we can get our work done prior to that by the end of April. Um, but that should help you with right, your question. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But that'll give you the timeline. Um, next week, we're looking at having our next, if it doesn't snow next Wednesday, have another <laughs> budget workshop. Um, and that's where we start working on the uh, revenue side and start having these conversations. So if you folks like to come and be a spectator, it's, a, it's an exciting evening. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, now, your debt service is increasing for part of this uh, bond for the facade improvements and, and other improvements at the high school, right? Correct. What, what is the, uh, there's also some monies in there that is like a grant for that, right? That isn't necessarily reflected in this debt service? All the money that we're going to owe for that debt service has been tied into this number. There's not going to be any other additional numbers. That's what we're going to have to pay back. Okay. Right. But can you tell me what the total amount of money that is on Total it? package? Yes. Yeah, it's a $2.5 million. And where we got the money from was we've got approximately a million dollars from the revolving renovation fund, which um, is a program the state has to maintain buildings. And we were approved, actually, we were number two on the project list, which was kind of exciting. Um, so of that $997,000 that we received, they've forgiven 32% of that. So we only have to pay back $660,000 to that. So that's, that's helped us out. Another portion of that would be the QSCB, a Qualified School Construction Bond, which was for $667,000. Um, that is a, is a program where the bond is purchased by a bank, and in this case, our bond was purchased by Camden National, a local bank. Uh, the interest that they charge us on that, um, we will get reimbursed by the IRS. And so our first interest payment is due um, next in May, and we've already filed paperwork with the IRS to get our refund. So what it is is we'll kind of, we'll pay it out and we'll get it back in. So it actually turns into a zero interest loan for $667,000. And then the remaining balance of that will be a general um, general bond, general obligation bond. And uh, we'll be actually taking action at our next board meeting on that. So go from there. And the anticipation with these improvements to the high school, that that school will be around for another 25, 30 years maybe? I would say 30 to 40 more years. That's what, that's what we're looking at. You're going to see the entire, all your glass is going to turn into, if it's not a window, it's going to turn into masonry. And that's going to be a covering over the top of a framed wall, insulated framed wall, which would be filling in the void. And they're actually going to start work April vacation. Um, they're going to do a practice round of taking down some of the windows on the music wing, which on the first floor, just to make sure what they're going to do is going to work. And, so it's exciting. The, the company has been on top of their game. They've already started fabricating, and uh, the walls are going to be shipped in on trucks, hmm. delivered to the school, and stood up. And then uh, once they get fastened, then the masons will come in behind and put the finishing exterior. So it's an exciting project. <coughs> um, if you will, on the second page, if you roll it over, just some things to share and. and I'm very pleased to say there's a lot of great things happening at our schools. So our test scores are showing that we're continuing to improve. Our elementary, um, Miles Lane School, and our middle school were identified as one of 19 schools in the state of Maine as high-improving schools. So I'm very proud of that. We're <coughs> not 
<laughs> Even though I say we're very happy with that, I also say we have a lot of work left. And that's fine. We'll recognize that. What I presented to you is a profile of graduation rate and dropout rate since 2006. You can see in 2006 our graduation rate was at 74%. Um, this past year we were at 91%. So we have a positive profile there. Our dropout rate in 2006 was 7.69% based on the cohort. Um, this year our dropout rate was so low it fell below 10 individuals, so it's the state can't report on that because you can identify the individuals once it gets below mm. a certain number, but it's, uh, it's well below 3%, <coughs> which is good news. And post-graduation activity for the high school for the last two years, you can see in 2012, 69% of our uh, students moved on to post-secondary two or four year schools, 15% went in the military, 9% in the workforce, and 7% returned for a fifth year. And this is interesting because students with special needs are entitled to stay in school until they're 20. So it's not a matter of four years and thank you very much, you may go now. If they choose to stay, they can stay there. But they actually count as a drop mm. Okay? And we have students who will say, I, and I need an extra year, I didn't finish. And they can graduate in five years, but they still count as a dropout. So some of our dropouts are included in those numbers too. So it's not all bad. And then 13, our numbers, 72% um, went on to college, 15% uh, into the military, 10% in the workforce, and 3% returned to BHS for a fifth year. So exciting things are happening. Uh, we've been into a program. We actually are offering now at the high school, we have over 30 college credits that students can acquire through articulation agreements with University of Maine, Fort Kent. Eastern Maine Community College and the University of Southern Maine. We're part of the Bridgier program in Hancock County. The Bridgier program has been where students from high schools would go to their um, career and technical centers and in association with the University of Maine be able to take college courses for the two years of their technical program. Um, the, the folks for the Bridgier folks were willing to do something different with Hancock County <clears throat> so we're running it like a Hancock County technical program. And so each of the schools in Hancock County have an allocation of students who for the program. And we're going to be allocated up to four slots that we know are guaranteed um, of kiddos that can take the Bridge Air program, which means they'll do their vocational programming at HCTC or with us if they're doing welding. And then they'll take um, the courses from the university at Ellsworth High School and still be considered Boxport High School students. Mm -hmm. But they'll be able to get um, at least one year of college completed while they're in high school. Wow. We also have an articulation agreement with Maine Maritime Academy where we're doing pre-engineering courses with them. And so some exciting things are happening at the school. Very proud to report that. That's what we're looking for. That's <laughs> what I thought. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, yes, sir. A question. First off, I th the on the graduation rate, I think that's fantastic. You people definitely need to be commended for the 17% the 17 increase. That's fantastic. The only question I would have is how does that compare statewide? What, how, I mean, we're above the state average. We're above the state and average. And we're above the state goal. Great. When it comes to fantastic. graduation. And, and a lot of that has to do with we're, we're really being purposeful about dealing with the individual needs of all students. And the BAR program, which we just finished up that grant, is, this is our last year of that, has been wonderful helping us really target to learn the needs of every child. And we've expanded that now into the sophomore year. And so the teachers are, are talking about the kids on a regular basis and they know the ones that are doing well, okay, we can still support them. Who needs a little extra help or who needs a lot of help? And we're not letting kids slip through the cracks. You know, again, it's not perfect, but it's far improved. Mm -hmm. And we're using data to, to really track these kids and to find out, you know, how they're doing and staying on top of them. That along with our curriculum changes and, and moving towards proficiencies, uh, the kids really know. They understand what the learning targets and the goals for each class are and they know that they have to do well on those or they don't move forward. And uh, it's paying dividends. 
No, I understand you're right when you said next year the debt service should go down about 100000 About $100,000 we're retiring okay, debt. That's one of the areas that increased quite a bit this year. Yes. The other area that, that looks like it increased quite a bit was regular education. Is that basically due to contractual obligations? It's, a, it's tied right to it, yes. Okay. Yeah. What does it look like if you get, uh, like, another community like you've been checking out to sign on? How does that help you, your numbers? What that would do is that, that would add approximately 150 students. So it would take us up over the 1,200 student mark. Um, if you look at the high school, we can absorb 50 or 60 students and we wouldn't have to add faculty. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a positive impact. You, you'd up your EPS numbers. Um, in terms of the K through pre-K through 8 programming, um, depending on where those numbers are, and it never, they never turn out to be 10 kids at a level. Yeah. It's always, you know, 15 here, 5 there. Um, Good years and bad years. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. We, we'd have to make some adjustments on ter terms of that, but all in all, it would be very positive. Mm -hmm. um, the impact, just in rough calculations for Bucksport, would take your share down from that 67 down to about 59%, so it would lessen the burden on, on each of the towns. So when does it happen? <laughs> well, that's up to them. That community did vote, and they voted overwhelmingly to move forward with the withdrawal process. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, they know we're a suitor, and we're we're standing by, ready to respond. But the ball is in their court. Right. And um, but um, I think it would be a at first blush, I'd say it would be a very healthy fit for both yeah, both definitely. sides of the conversation. Um, and like I spoke to them, it's it. It's going to boil down to a business decision, and will this be a good fit? And then we run the numbers on either side, and if they're positive, then that's something we should move forward with. And if they're not, yep. then we should recognize that and never make a force fit. Right. And I think that's been one of the secrets to this RSU. It really wasn't as much of a force fit as others were. Yeah. I was something. Assume, assuming it goes to the point that it's going to work out, and yep. you want to go forward. Who makes uh, who makes the official decision to do, to, to move forward? The Is voters. It, you have to bring it out to a vote. Everything goes to a vote. They do. Do we also? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the the three the existing members would all have to vote in, in favor, favor of. Yep. It, it, okay. Yeah. And so. You know, basically, all my job is going to be is to work with them along with the school boards to create a possible plan. Same thing we did with a transition to an RSU. It's coming together with a transition plan, and then present that to the voters to get get their information. We'll, as we go, we'll do informational meetings. Do you have a cost per pupil, and how does that compare to the rest of the state? Right off the top of my head, I, you know, I can't quote it for you, but I can tell you. Roughly ballpark. Ballpark, we're average or below. We're the lowest in Hancock County still. Um, as far as our high school tuition rate, um, we are at state average there. And as far as our elementary tuition rate, we're below state average. Um, my goal has been to try to stay right around that state average as best we can so we don't shortchange our programming but we don't go beyond our capacity to be able to afford the programming. That's been the strategy. Um, the directive we gave all of our department heads was basically to flatline the, their budgets except for contractual obligation. Yep. Um, I hope that, uh, you know, 4.89% seems a little steep considering mm -hmm. we're trying to flatline. Yep. And I, it sounds like this is just a wish list right now that you will still tweak it and uh, you know we're all in tight budget times and but uh, I, I think what what you're reporting tonight is we're seeing some great great things out of our school system and and we want to support education but we don't want to break the bank either so. <laughs> I, I think the message is heard and yeah. received and there's some board members behind me and yeah. I think they've had similar conversations with me as well. So. Any other questions from uh, the council? Yeah, I think you've done a great job yeah. in the school. Thank you. Really Thank you very much. It's yeah. not me, it's everybody. I know it's everybody, but yes, sir. he's a leader, too. Wild questions yeah, why not? Drill him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I have actually just got two questions. One is, when if you look at another community coming uh, coming into the, to the RSU, how does that... Uh, 
how does that impact the, the state funding formula? Mm -hmm. uh, and is it is it based on on uh, community valuation? And have you looked at that to see how how that would affect yes. uh, community coming in? Without being too uh, presumptive, I did take some preliminary looks at it. And how it affects us, it affects us on two levels, student numbers and valuation. Uh, the, the community that's expressed interest in conversations with us, their valuation would be very similar to what Orleans valuation is. Um, and their student numbers would be um, about 10% fewer than, than Orleans, maybe 15% fewer. So it, it's a fit. Okay. So it's not going to put us in a, in a skew. It's not going to be a, a community that's going to have an extremely high valuation, which is going to drop us. We're right now about a 30% receiver. And when I first got here, we were actually at 42 or 43%. So we've been going down. Um, but it's because the economic development director has been bringing in value. Obviously, that's. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> yeah. This came off smooth. Even though we rehearsed it, it came out great. So, you know, my, my second question is that um, I, I serve on a, the board for the community college, and I know we're working really hard at, uh, at retention. Um, when you're looking at the percentage of students that go on to uh, higher education, mm -hmm. do you have any way to be able to track what they do beyond the first semester? We do through the Mitchell Institute. Um, I don't have those numbers with me tonight, but we do have some numbers to that, yes. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to, yep. uh, to see how, how we're doing as a, as a school as far as the question yep. is that if you've got 74% going on to college, how many of them actually graduate versus yep. how many just go the first year and say, I yep. College isn't for me, and, and we do have data for that too. Yep. We'd certainly, be interested in seeing that. I can make that available. Thank you, sir. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anybody else have any questions for? I'd like to know um, what the heating costs look like now that you're connected to natural gas. <laughs> Cheaper than oil. <laughs> More expensive than projected. And compared to your current year budget and the year before that, please. Um, we are down about thirty percent. Very nice. Any problems, or has it gone smooth? Extremely smooth. Good. The only issue that we had at all was with one of our burners kept cutting off when it went to high fire. And they tried for multiple attempts to fix it. And it turned out to be on the sealed side of the burner, which was the factory side. Mm -hmm. And there was a wire that was broken off. Oh, no kidding. And that was it. Since yeah. they fixed that, it's been very, very smooth. Good. No, very, very good. And what's nice about it is, with just a toggle switch flip, we can go from natural gas to oil. Yep. And we've retained our um, tanks, and according to the EPA, we have to we have to take a shipment every year to keep the tanks active. We'll obviously inspect them and to license them the way we're supposed to. So we'll do that, and we'll, we'll, we'll our plan is to play the highs and the lows. And right. Go back and forth. Yeah. I I don't think you'd be buying a lot of oil. I, don't I, think I so really either. think the propane is. I mean, the uh, natural gas is going to go back down. You know, I think you're right. Yep. Um, but that's good. I'm yeah. glad that happened. Yeah, and it's in every one of the buildings. Now, if I can get them to come down my street, I'd be like, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. The summer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Any other questions out there? I have one more. Um, you know, for years, Bucks Board's school system has had a, a black eye, so to speak, as uh, being uh, poor performers, uh, a rough place to educate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking at what has happened over the last five or six years, it's a really good story. Do you have any plans on how to get that story out there to the uh, other communities and uh, to generally the, the people around this area, Hancock County, Penobscot County, uh, saying, hey, Bucksport's a great place to come live and raise your kids because yeah. we have an excellent school system? Yeah. Well, part of that is, and I'm going to extend the offer right now, I did with the Chamber of Commerce and invited the Chamber of Commerce to go on a tour with kids in the building. I think it's important. Um, so the plans are yes, starting with grassroots first because I find grassroots probably the most important place to start. Um, I can do whatever writing I want to do, but until I can get you in and actually see the buildings, and when you come into the hallway and you walk into the hallway and you go, well, where are the kids? Well, they're in the classes. Mm -hmm. And you say, wait, there's over 300 kids in this building? Yes, there are. And they're actively engaged. It's, it's a positive story to tell. And then have people talk to the kids about what's happening. And, 
you know, walk into the different classes. So I extend that invitation to the to the council. Love to do it, and I can get together with you and throw out a date, and folks can meet. That'd be idea. wonderful. I'd love to do that. So that's probably first and foremost. Um, another thing um, I'd like to do is, if, is, with your indulgence, if we can talk and talk to our board chair about maybe putting together a joint workshop between uh, the town council, the school board, and invite the selectmen from our other member towns and just start to talk about economic development, the role of education, and, and go from there. We do have a good story to tell. We have challenges. I am not denying that, um, but we're gaining. I'm very pleased to see the efforts we're moving forward, um, and we'll continue to work work at it. And we're going to take our bumps. There's going to be some things that aren't going to be good. Other things are going to be better, and we'll move forward. And who contacted who about this other possibility of the other community? They reached out to us. That's a good sign. I thought it was a very good sign, and, yeah. and they came over, and I did a, a visit with their select board and their uh, town manager, and we spent four and a half hours, and they were very impressed. And we went over and they did a presentation, and that went over favorably I believe so we put our best foot forward and go from there we have some plans to do more things as we generate and start to move on we've had a number of schools visiting our schools to see how we're transitioning to proficiency based education uh, that's very nice that's getting us out there and, and putting us on the map so you know I don't mind telling our story but I don't want to be bragful and boastful you know. <laughs> But I will tell you, as a <clears throat> as a consumer, and I'm very, very pleased. I'm going to take my hat off as superintendent. I'm going to be a dad now. Um, the board was very kind to allow me to bring my daughter to school here. Um, she's graduating this year. I pray to God she does. It's yeah. time for her to graduate. Um, she was accepted at five colleges. Uh, she, was, she chose to go to Maine, and she was accepted into the honors program, which is exciting for her. But she received um, academic scholarships at all five of the schools. Three of the schools were out of state schools, and there's significant awards sixty thousand dollars a year. Right. I mean, I mean, not sixty over four years, sixty thousand over four years yeah. at one of the schools. And you know, I'm very pleased with the education, the opportunity she received here. Okay. And so, you, know. you and I had had a conversation maybe a month or so ago about doing some collaboration between the town and the school system on putting a video together yep. about what Bucksport has to offer. Mr. Marlin, I believe, was involved with back the junior high did that. Well, back when it was uh, the big VHS. VHS. <laughs> so that was a while back. We're coming, we're and, coming and ways. And there's, <laughs> there's a bunch of copies of that around, but uh, I think that's something we r really ought to do. And I think it would be a heck of an exercise for the, the students and yeah. uh, and also get some townspeople involved with it too and, and put the, uh, the message out there that, hey, Bucksport's a nice place to live and raise your family and yeah, they're good opportunities. Yeah. I know where you could premiere it. <laughs> yeah. You could direct it. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it will be in digital format. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Any, any other questions? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I had a chance to go on that tour with the um, Chamber of Commerce. Um, I did not grow up here in Bucksport, but I can tell you I was thoroughly impressed with the students at every school that we visited. Uh, I remember when I went to high school, sir, um, we'd get up five minutes to 10 minutes before the bell rang and waited in line because we had nothing better to do. Our students aren't doing that in any of these schools. They are there until the bell rings from their seats. And it was wonderful. It's a great story. And the school board and the superintendent are doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Booth. Entirely welcome. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to give me a call. I'll be happy to chat with you. We appreciate your support. Thank you. And thanks for the push. I know it's still there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope you don't think I'm rude if I run off. No, no. No problem. No. <laughs> drive, drive carefully. I will. Thank you. Knows how to clear a room, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, item six, consider resolve R 2014-172, authorizing the payment of $40,550.50 to Oliver Associates for the design engineering services regarding to the secondary treatment plant upgrade. Uh, this is basically uh, just the regular engineering services getting ready to uh, start building our secondary treatment plant, and it's basically all budgeted. It's coming out of an account. Uh, for that purpose. 
So how would the council like to proceed? I move we approve resolve 2014-172 as presented. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolve. Anything further from the public? From the council? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Item 7. Consider resolve R-2014-173 authorizing the purchase of a Marshall Swift appraisal guide for the assessor's office. Yeah, we are missing the, the amount here. In the, did he have a figure on amount? Yeah, it should be on the resolve. Uh, okay. In the right. resolve, it's uh, the the finance committee. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, I missed it. Here. Okay. Reviewed it and uh, recommended that the, these funds be used. Um, Jeff presented to the to the finance committee um, the uh, his need to up, update his. Uh, Marshall and Swift uh, guide, the one that he's using now, that uh, as you can see in the resolve, uh, that he uses to determine uh, values on uh, on on buildings. Uh, the, the one he's using now is is 2004. Ten years old. Uh, and uh, yeah. so uh, he's asked uh, to be able to use the, the use these funds to be able to update a new one. And he said that um, he thought that he, he can traditionally they can get about four or five years out of them before they need to replace them again. So it's a one time cost that you shouldn't see it again for another four to five years. And it would the uh, there's sufficient funds in the uh, in this year's uh, account to cover that cost. Yeah, it's coming out of the town office equipment reserve account, Correct. which is uh, and it's six hundred and fourteen. So mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. That's the cost of it was five ninety nine plus shipping, so the total is six fourteen. Correct. Okay. Okay. How would the council like to proceed? So move. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolve. Anything further from the public? Further from the council? All those in favor? Opposed. Motion passes. Item A, consider resolve R-2014-174 to accept the recommendations of the Finance Committee to renew the existing uh, certificate of deposit with Camden National Bay, uh, Bank for a period of two years. Michael. Yep, this is um, a uh, CD that's come due at the end of this month, and uh, we opted at this time to uh, uh, go with Camden. Um, which is, I think, the one, it's the same, it came from their bank, this one that's due, right? Um, with the best, they had the best rate of, uh, unfortunately, it's not very high, but it's 1.15% over a 24-month period. Um, we also set up some dates to uh, look at this in the future on how we invest and uh, maybe to give us a few more options. Um, did I miss anything, uh, Kathy? The two financial institutions that you selected to. Oh, present. yeah. That's is that part of the resolve? Down here? Oh, it's in the resolve. Okay. And this is all part of our undesignated fund balance. This money. Yeah, this is the what we had invested. There are two CDs. Um, there's uh, 1.6 million in undesignated funds, which is one fourth of the total. And also um, six hundred some odd thousand of capital reserves, totaling okay. the two point three million. Okay, it's probably written there. The two uh, um, banks that, that we'd like to keep talking to about future investments, which the next CD due will be in September of this year, um, will be uh, um, Acadia Trust and, and First Advisors, um, and we've set up some dates that we can. You know, we're going to talk about down the road to uh, they can help us go over this type of investing that we can possibly do. Right now, we're actually, when you look at it, we're actually losing money by only getting 1% back on your money. Because um, over a two year period, you have more than 1% <coughs> cost of living increase. Okay, thank you. How would the council like to proceed? I move for approval of the resolve. 2014-174, as presented. Second. We have motion and second to approve the resolve. Any further from the public? From the council? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes.
Okay, item 9, consider resolve R-2014-175 to accept the recommendations of the Finance Committee for the funding uh, to the Alamo Theater. Mike. Gee, I love that Finance Committee. <laughs> <coughs> The uh, Alamo Theater came to us. Uh, they've been on a fund-raising drive. Uh, they started a, uh, like Friends of Fort Knox, they started a Friends of Alamo to uh, work on uh, raising funds for uh, a couple purposes now it turned into. One was to get a digital projector. And um, due to the fact that they almost can no longer get any new films that aren't just solely in digital. so. Uh, they only have 35 millimeter, and they uh, they uh, need need to if they want to keep up with being able to show recent released films, they have to have a digital, which was going to cost them fifty thousand dollars approximately. So they came to us to ask us if we could help them also, and uh, and due to the fact that they have been raising money um, really well um, so far. Um, they needed a little assistance to uh, get to some goals. Um, I guess the, there is a, uh, they were going to be given uh, two $25,000 grants if they could match those grants. And one of them was the 25000 for the digital projector, and the other one was uh, 25000 for the logistics of the, the theater itself to kind of upgrade it and keep it going. Um, and w we all talked it over and um, there's been a lot of support in town around it so we decided at the time they needed $7,500 um, to uh, make their first goal of 25000 so they could actually purchase the and get, and get the other twenty five so they could actually purchase the digital projector so we were making recommendation to the council that we give them that money $7,500 so that they will actually have the money to buy the projector. Um, and we also, uh, in order to help them make their goal um, of another $25,000, we, we we're suggesting to the council to offer $12,500, half of the twenty-five, if they raise the other $12,500 themselves. And they wouldn't get, receive ours until they raise theirs. Once they get that, um, they'll get another 25000 from this other grant, um, which would um, give them a total of $100,000 um, to buy the projector and to upgrade the theater. Um, so it, it's a total of 20000 and we're, we're asking that it come out of TIF funds. How would the council <coughs> like to proceed? I move uh, for approval of the... Uh, 2014 175 in reference to funding for the Alamo Theater? Yes, second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolve. Anything further from the public? Feel free to speak. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> There's four of us up here. We're all Just one has to say nothing. <laughs> Is, are you disappointed out there? Or are you? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Anything further from the council? Yes. yes. Okay. Go ahead. You first. One of the one of the important things we we discussed during the the meeting with uh, the representative from the Alamo is in concerning the uh, second matching grant, the second fifty thousand dollars. One of the things that they are going to look at trying to do. There's no commitment because it isn't at that point yet. Is um, the possibility of, of having a person um, that would help draw in um, um, artists of various sorts to the Alamo for the 200 odd nights a year that they don't have movies for, which is a will be. A big benefit to to the Alamo, obviously, but also to all the rest of Bucksport, because if, if they bring in entertainers of, of uh, that will bring people into downtown, that generates funds when the other people are downtown, and it it, it spreads out. It's it, it's a it, it's a very good thing to have happen, um, and they uh, I, I know Mr. White Weiss 
thought that was, you know, something they could look at and, and work towards. Uh, being uh, the, in this particular case, a person that's saying the glass is completely full <coughs> instead of uh, my normal position, in this position that could <laughs> potentially grow to something that would involve ba Bacchus, the auditorium, and everything. I mean, but that's down the road a ways, but it's the first step towards that kind of a, of a, of a drawer into town. And again, we need to do everything we possibly can to get people's people into downtown. We can't make them spend money, but we can get them down there. By golly, we can we can urge them the right way. So, I just I think that's an important part of that second grant. I, I just think that the, the theater is an important landmark downtown, and it also does something that I didn't realize that no other private concern does in New England, and that's to save films and. Um, it's quite an operation there, and um, it's it's something that I, I know you know is is needed, and and when people find out about it from other states, they're starting to use it. Um, but what it's important for us is is the theater, and uh, it, it right now it is the most visible downtown building. When you come in, the, everybody recognizes a theater because of the the, the marquee up front and everything else, and and. Um, the reason we didn't give them, somebody had, had asked that we just give them a lump sum, and we, we, we didn't want to do that. We'd like to keep them raising money. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why we made it a contingency type thing, because we, we want people to continue to give to the theater and um, help them make their goal. And uh, so we're just, we're just assisting them. So, um, and we did before in the past, and maybe down the road we'll do it again. <laughs> But that's why we did what we did. We appreciated the time you took. Um, really, the questions were amazing, and it was it was great the the time you took with us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I can remember the black and white films we were showing. In fact, I was talking to Mr. Weiss there one day, and I said I remember the last movie played was uh, a movie Godzilla in black and white, and he turned around and pointed to a poster. That was actually that movie. You know, uh, scared the heck out of me. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I was only six. <laughs> but you were looking anyway. in your closet every night, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> I've been traumatized ever since. Uh, okay, we have a motion and a second it on the floor. Uh, anything further from the council? I think it's just a super, super idea. It's great what you people are doing, and I think it's fantastic uh, the support you're getting from all over the world, basically, to save save the Alamo, Absolutely. which is a vital part of our downtown. And so, okay, all those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, item 10, consider resolve R-2014-176 to refer a request from Maine Water to Finance Committee for a recommendation this is basically uh, something we do on a routine basis, I believe. Yes. Uh, it's actually a tax uh, abatement for some of the infrastructure that they have, which helps uh, keep our overall users' rates down. Uh, how would the council like to proceed? This, again, this is just to okay. refer to the finance committee. Okay. Make a motion we refer this to the finance committee. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to move this on to the finance committee. Anything from the public, from the council? Uh, one thing, the I believe there's a typo, <laughs> and so we don't get to the point of passing it at some future time with a typo in it. If you go down to the one fifth paragraph up from the bottom, it says that Main Water currently pays taxes on one million two fifty six five eighteen. Yeah, and then if you go two paragraphs below that, it says the re a request would exempt. Two six in value, leaving a net taxable value of. Would that not also be the one million two fifty six, not the three nine eight ninety six? I simply got the numbers from the assessor. So yeah, no, I'm just I'm just thinking that paying attention to the numbers. It, their total valuation is three million eight ninety six. You're exempting, potentially going to exempt two million six twenty one, which would leave a taxable amount of one million two. It's just the wrong numbers in the wrong place and it's just 
don't want to get it messed it up. Would, Dave, it would be his, his, you can see what I circled. Yeah, no, it's, it would be beneficial if you if you amend it and just uh, and adopt it as amended. Yeah, that right. That's why I'm su suggesting that we could amend that to that number. Yep. So that million, that the third paragraph up in the bottom that says net taxable value of three eight ninety six would actually be one million two fifty six five eighteen. I just don't want to have Thank it go you. through and come out of the finance committee and yep. <laughs> that would really mess things up. Okay, we got to uh, act on this again. Yeah, uh, Frank, would you it's amend your motion? Going to the committee, though. It's only going to the committee anyway, yeah. so the, we can still send it to the committee. It. Recommend this to amend by, by the finance committee. Oh, yeah. If you would, if you could just amend, you know, okay. amend the the resolve so that again to make it clean when it goes to the committee, it, it would it's be correct. in the best interest. Okay. Uh, Make a recommendation to send to the Finance Committee a request for tax exemption uh, values for Maine Water uh, to exempt 1,256,18. No, just say as amended. As amended, okay. And I'll second that motion. <laughs> <Thank> okay. <you. laughs> Sorry about that. Any further no from the public? Anything further from the Council? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, item 11, consider resolve R 2014-177 to refer a request for a tax collector from the tax collector to meet with the finance committee in <coughs> executive session to discuss property tax abatement. And is this an executive session just with, with the finance committee? Yes. Okay. I, uh, after I wrote the agenda, I realized that that could be misinterpreted as to what I was asking for is that um, as the uh, uh, state statute says, any time that you meet to, to deal with uh, abatement issues or the property taxes, it, the statute says it has to be done in the executive session. So I just wanted to clarify that so that when you were, were uh, scheduling a, a finance committee meeting, one of the things I had to ask the, the chair of the committee is if we could set it, uh, I, I know it's a lot to ask for the committee, but maybe do it on a separate night that they're doing other things with the finance committee simply because mm -hmm. I would prefer to you know, have the folks who uh, come in to talk with the committee not be, uh, you know, part of a, a regular meeting. Uh, so, the uh, uh, when someone applies, uh, submits an application for an, uh, an abatement, there's a process um, that ha has to um, how you review that. Um, my position on it is that uh, that I'm really uh, serving as the tax collector because you needed a body. Um, but I felt that the the, the decision-making really of this ultimately would be the council So I really wanted to get the council's input um, before I made any decisions uh, as the tax collector Sounds reasonable How would the council like to proceed? I move we move resolve 2014-177 to the Finance Committee Second Any further from the public? From the council, all those in favor? Opposed, motion passes. <coughs> okay, item 12. Vote to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing matters related to two separate local business interests uh, persuading to uh, Article 1 MRSA Section 405, Subsection 6, Subsection C. So, uh, we're going to go into executive session or vote to go into executive session to discuss these two items. Yes, sir. Just wanted to give you a little update on Augusta before you leave, maybe. Okay. Would that, would that be okay? okay? Yeah, just let me uh, yep. finish up by saying that uh, when we come out of executive session, uh, there'll be two votes on these issues that were discussed in executive session. Okay, go ahead, sir. Hmm. Sorry, I didn't know where to insert myself on your agenda. Um, just a little update from Augusta. Um, last week was a pretty successful week. Um, some of us don't gauge success by laws passed and signed into, uh, bills passed and signed into law. A lot of my bills this, um, this uh, 126th legislature are to get people's attention. 
and uh, one that we we uh, that I put in was to improve the rail line to actually do a study uh, and identify the cost of the improvement of the rail line from Bucksport to Brewer. Um, we held it over and finally pulled the bill but in the process we've had a, a very recent meeting with uh, Pan Am Railroad um, early on I'd heard that they were very difficult to work with but uh, after we put the bill in and they were fairly upset about it they uh, finally got their attention and <laughs> it worked out pretty well we actually couldn't get the meeting scheduled I think we tried three times but finally last week we did uh, unfortunately um, uh, Dave and Dave didn't didn't make it but on uh, Bucksport's behalf we we talked about uh, the Sprague uh, site we talked about the Longview site um, they're in constant communication with Verso but we had representation from Perk the managing partner which is USA Energy just up the road um, we had uh, representation from DOT the commissioner couldn't make it but sent two representatives a freight manager and their lobbyist um, we also had uh, two people from Pan Am um, uh, Cindy uh, Scarano who is the area manager and the freight manager uh, who was there we had representation from um, Mallinckrodt, uh, the the, uh, the uh, landfills in Arrington. That land has been divided up now, so they now own the land, the five landfills. Uh, we also had representation from MRC, and I believe you're a member of MIC, MRC uh, in the Perk uh, partnership. Um, let's see who else did we had. We had. Um, Representative Archie Vero, who is Brewer, but also on Transportation Committee. Uh, we had the, the House Chair of Transportation, uh, uh, Representative uh, Terrio from Madawaska, and uh, Senator Youngblood was there. Uh, myself, Paul White from the, the town of Arlington. But what we accomplished was um, much more than I expected. Uh, we'd heard that the upgrade of the rail line between here and there would be about a half a million dollars uh, but basically they can upgrade them through a maintenance program so I, I guess uh, uh, the rail line as it's graded now uh, can have seven good uh, ties per was it 31 feet of rail but as they uh, get more freight more interest more activity they can upgrade those by adding more rails, so it's almost a maintenance program than, a, than an upfront. Um, and we also had a bill that I think I reported on last time that was to shift the ratepayer subsidy for PERC, which is the electric uh, subsidy, onto uh, municipal waste and tipping fees that <coughs> we basically defeated in the project. Well, that was also a carryover bill. But in the process, um, we had a subcommittee on solid waste, for which I, I served. And we're finding, uh, I think I reported this last time, and from my opinion, we're either in the first, the end of the first or the second generation of how we're going to handle trash in the future. And uh, so the, the bill to subsidize has, has gone away. And we've now uh, put together a letter from the committee to DEP and uh, uh, all the other stakeholders to get together and to find what trash is going to look like in the future. They'll come back to the next uh, next uh, legislature. But in the meeting um, where we had uh, USA Energy and uh, Transportation and we had Pan Am, um, it was interesting because they're all interested in how is per now that we aren't going to subsidize, how is PERC, USA Energy, MRC, and the other partner going to continue or, or, or not? And um, what the representative from USA Energy mentioned, now that they're back together talking again, the, um, the solution to trash may be a container-type transfer station 
We heard that uh, Rooster County's got some major problems. They're so far removed that a lot of that's going to Canada. Do they do a landfill? Do they uh, uh, do their own waste energy? But uh, in this meeting, it, it almost sounds like the amount of trash that's generated by the state can be transported to Orrington. Uh, it's a big facility, probably bigger than it should have been or, or is necessary now, may be able to operate profitably by bringing all the trash in from the state and maybe even make it a, a really viable business uh, by whatever the solution of solid waste is in the future. So uh, that was that was pretty good. That's that's basically a forklift in Arlington and containers that either go on track or rail or, or they even talked about barge. And um, that was fairly expensive for Arlington, but Three, two, two and a half miles down the road, you've got Chimbro that's, that's got a, a facility there that could, could barge in containers if, if necessary. Um, but the good news was everybody was excited as much as possible about getting together to, to come up with a solution for the rail. Had another meeting with somebody who uh, grew up in Arlington, has uh, been in the energy business for some time and has retired at age 38 and come back and wants to put together a, a business to help people save their energy costs. Every meter in the state now is one of the smart meters that uh, with third party can help you manage the cost of your energy either from, uh, it's, it's sort of a, uh, early, you, you pay and then they help you manage the consumption. So uh, right now, it's, it's not legal for a third party to come into the meters, but that's, that's working, working towards that for the next session. Also, uh, he's fairly excited about a commercial uh, solar uh, site, maybe in that Orrington, the 200 acres there. Uh, Mallinckrodt now has about 60, control of about 60 acres, and Orrington has you know, 140, so it could be an interesting complex where everything kind of comes together, where you've got the rail, uh, Verso, your sites, your economic development. And uh, so, you know, it's been interesting down there. We've had some good ideas and good discussions, and we haven't had a lot of bills signed into law, but I think things are starting to move forward. Um, one thing I, I would like to, to, to mention, um, Dave has been to the legislature testifying several things from last year to a more re recent testimony and uh, has represented Bucksport very well in, in, in you know, some very hard situations. So, um, you know, I was proud to have somebody from Bucksport there doing the right thing and uh, it was extremely effective. So, that's what I have from Bucksport. Any, any other questions or further instructions? <laughs> Sounds good. Can I just can I ask a quick question? Sure. Like, did they talk? Did Pan Am talk at all about the quality of the service or the quantity of the service versus the the, the rail itself? Uh, they one of the they challenges. didn't. They didn't. Uh, their representative, their freight representative, there was more than happy to, to talk and service. I did mention that that flat steel uh, concern, and and Versus had the same concern that they Correct. talked to them constantly about. Um, I was pretty enthused because they were they were welcoming and, and and ready to talk and everybody had a little piece of how they could increase their business therefore they could increase the the value of the rail and they basically Bill basically said call me anytime so I'll get you some names and numbers so you can call him directly instead of going through with Cindy. Okay. Lastly, I just would share with the council that is we had. Um, unfortunately, we, I already had a, a commitment that I had to be at um, when they set the schedule. Same was with the mayor and same with Verso, so that none of us were able to attend the meeting simply because we had conflicting schedules. It certainly had nothing to do with a lack of interest. We really wanted to be there. We could make the first three ones that were scheduled. We couldn't make the fourth one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we need to... I'm uh, Go into executive yes, session. Yes. Second. We have a motion and a second to go into executive session. All those in favor? 
Oppose, motion passed.